for coming. I am super, super, super excited about this. And I'm super excited about this cruise and product and all the great things. Um, I have with me today, Kathy from Atlas Ocean Voyages, and she is going to talk to us about some of the details. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the details. We're going to talk a little bit about Antarctica. And there is no obligation under of any sort, but should you feel compelled to want to book a cruise, we do have some extra special bonuses for you. And we do have some fun trivia questions that will intersperse throughout the presentation, which will include things like, you know, Antar fun facts about Antarctica. Like there are two active volcanoes. Um, a quick thing about the trivia. I will ask you to type your answers in the chat box. And Amy is the arbiter of who got it right first. So there's no, there's no disputing her because She's kind of a bully about it. So um, she will decide who gets it right first and then we will mail you one of these lovely prize packages. So with that, um, I will also invite you to ask any questions that you have. You can either pop them into the chat box or you can just unmute yourself and ask away. We don't mind either way. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Kathy who will start telling you a little bit about Atlas. Well, thanks. And thanks so much, Stephanie, Amy, Debbie, everyone um, at Live Well Travel Often has been amazing. And um, thanks for, for being excited about our product and for letting me come and talk um, to you all about it because they're excited about it. So for those of you who have not heard of Atlas Ocean Voyages, that's not an uncommon thing because we are brand new. So I thought I would start off by giving you a little bit of background information. Stephanie's gonna jump in here and we're gonna kind of co-navigate this uh, presentation a little bit so that it's more of a conversation, less a presentation. So if you've got questions, uh, we wanna try and get through um, the main information, but we definitely wanna answer questions for you and get you excited about learning, not just about our new brand, but also Antarctica, which is really the theme um, of tonight's call. So, um, but a little bit of background about Atlas Ocean Voyages. We are um, a brand new small ship, um, all-inclusive travel brand. Um, we are headquartered in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Our parent company um, is based in Portugal, but we are their first North American facing brand. Um, we have kind of tried to carve out our own niche for ourselves. Um, we call it Lux Adventure. And in the next couple of slides, I'll tell you exactly what Lux Adventure means. Um, but what we've really tried to do is take the small ship luxury experience and marry that with an expedition experience or a more adventurous type of cruise experience. Um, we felt like there was kind of a, um, a hole in the marketplace for that. And, and we've come in and we really want to make it an amazing, um, uh, very attractive experience on board the ship with great service and awesome food, uh, not overwhelming with people. Um, but we also want to take you to some amazing places around the world and give you some really unique experiences when you're shoreside as well. So we're actually starting off our inaugural season. So for, for the record, we are brand new, which means we are building our ships from scratch in the shipyard in Portugal. Um, our first ship is World Navigator, as she is the first in a series of five ships that will be launched between this year and 2023. Um, so World Navigator will be delivered to us in just a couple of months, and her very first cruise will take place in July of this year. Um, then her sister ship, uh, World Traveler, she's under construction right now. She's moving right along, and we've also laid the keel for the third ship, World Seeker. So we're moving right along in terms of getting those ships in the water. Um, I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to tell you a lot more details about our tiny little ships. Um, and uh, we pack a big punch, though, and what we br bring to the table and offer you as well. Um, and then we'll really go in depth to what we do about half the year, which is expedition cruising. And we'll talk about Antarctica specifically. So we have kind of coined the phrase, we've actually trademarked it, a Lux Adventure, um, which really we feel encompasses what our brand truly is all about. So you're going to hear me use the word lux versus luxury quite often because we don't want to come across as overly formal or stuffy uh, because that's not what we're about at all. Um, there will be no formal nights on board. For those of you who have cruised before, um, it won't be the, the ball gowns and tuxedos. No formal nights at all. Everything will be resort casual, kind of a come-as-you-are vibe. 
Um, the idea is we really want to focus on the destination um, so that you're not rushed to have to get dressed for dinner. If you've had an amazing experience ashore on a shore excursion, or you just came off of a Zodiac in Antarctica, um, you, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting back on the ship and rushing and, and showering and changing and, and being at dinner at a set time. So we'll always have open seating for our dining with a few exceptions. And I'll explain what those exceptions are a little later. Those are more special experiences, but open seating, dining, resort casual at all times. But at the same time, we're going to have five-star amenities and all of the appointments that you can imagine all around you at all times. It'll be, um, again, top-notch service, but it will be very friendly and approachable service. Um, the idea is that the atmosphere on board will be a very simple yet elegant one at the same time. But we really want our guests on board to, to enjoy themselves, let their hair down, and have a little fun. The idea is that everyone who is attracted to Atlas has one thing in common and that is that they love to explore. They want to travel. They can't wait to do something unique and different and have amazing experiences in these different destinations and come back on board and actually revel in what they just saw. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to bring a lot of this to you. Then we come to the adventure side. And I know some people love that word. They think adventure is amazing. And, and a lot of the pictures you see on the screen right now really encompass adventure. And yes, we will be offering Shore excursions like hang gliding and skydiving and dune buggy rides in the desert and camping overnight on the ice in Antarctica, those things we will offer. However, I don't want that to scare off people who maybe aren't so physically adventurous, but maybe are more adventurous in spirit. Adventurous to us equals experiences, and it is a very personal thing. So we will have other type of um, shore excursions on our itineraries that will be historical and cultural in nature. Um, we'll have some culinary tours and some really unique things that we can do at different ports of call if you're not sailing on one of the expeditions with us. Um, and then, of course, we'll have our expeditions as well. Um, but again, adventure might be hang gliding to you, but adventure to me might just be venturing off in a new port of call and sampling the local cuisine. So it really is a personal thing and whatever you make of it. So that's kind of the, the theme behind Lux Adventure. We really want it to be a personal experience uh, when you're on board the ship. And Kathy, just to be clear, there is no skydiving in Antarctica. <laughs> no, <laughs> not in Antarctica, but there is snorkeling from what I understand. I'm, I'm getting more and more uh, information on Antarctica every day because we're still building all of our um, optional shore excursions, but there are oh, some interesting cold. things to do there. It is cold. Yes, yes, yes. But it's interesting. Um, so in terms of Atlas Ocean Voyages, again, the pillars of our Lux Adventure experience are kind of what I've listed here. So we are all inclusive all the way. And on the next slide, I'm gonna show you exactly what that means and detail that for you. We try to include everything start to finish for you in one price all up front so that you know what you're getting and you, ha you don't have to worry about anything when you, when you get there. Um, we include airfare and all of our land excursions if you're not on Antarctica destinations. Um, any non-Antarctica cruises, we include one shore excursion per person per port. If you're in Antarctica with us, all of our fully guided ice cruises and our Zodiac expeditions are all included in the price. There's always optional shore excursions you can tack on no matter the destination, um, but we do include um, tours and, and um, of course all of our expeditions as well in the price. Um, we have a very inclusive community environment. Again, those Lux accommodations that you would be accustomed to on other luxury lines. Um, we have regionally inspired gourmet cuisine, which is again, all included. We're trying to um, kind of do some new things with, uh, with our menus, which are still in development at the moment, but we are, the idea is that we really wanna immerse you in the destination in which you're traveling. So you'll be able to go ashore or our executive team will, uh, executive chef and team will go ashore and bring back a local taste or a local flair of that destination and incorporate that into the menu items um, for every single uh, destination where they can possibly do that so that you have those options um, available to you when you're traveling so you can again have a taste of where you're visiting. And then of course we have our immersive um, shoreside experiences. Some again are going to be more active and others will be more historical and cultural. Um, I will point out, because there was a comment in the chat, I will point out that the um, 
tastes of local places are not um, endangered animals. They're right. just the regular ones. <laughs> in Antarctica, obviously, will be a little bit different. There's no little... market shopping in Antarctica. Um, and one all. other thing that's important to, to point out is because the ship is so small and there's only a maximum of 196 passengers or 186 in Antarctica, um, you know, if you have food issues, those can easily be catered to if you don't eat meat or you don't eat shellfish or whatever, whatever the thing is. And because I know there are some vegans on this call there, uh, this ship will have the first plant based restaurant at sea. Yeah, just announced just recently. And we haven't even done a press release on this. So you're actually the first public audience <laughs> to hear about it. So shh, you didn't hear it from me. But it's okay, um, you can say no, you heard it from excited. me. I don't mind. <laughs> you heard it from Stephanie, just not Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at keeping secrets. We all know. No, but um, I'll share with you in a little bit um, exactly what our restaurants and um, and some of the details on that that I have for you as well in terms of uh, of our cuisine on board as well. So everything you see on the screen in front of you here is part of what we call our all inclusive all the way element. So everything you see is included in the price of one of our journeys. Um, you know, again, it depends on if you're sailing with us on an expedition cruise or if you're sailing with us. Um, to uh, a destination in Europe, South America, the deep Caribbean, Amazon, um, you know, any of those destinations, but everything here is included. Including um, air. Which is huge. Just saying, and, and by the way, Antarctica cruises, um, going to Antarctica, getting to Ushuaia, which is at the very southernmost tip of Argentina, um, is not the easiest place to get to. So with the Antarctica sailings, the flights that are included is a private charter jet service from Orlando. So if you're thinking, but I don't live in Orlando, that's okay because there is service from any of 16 other gateways um, in the US and Canada to get you to Orlando. So as long as you live somewhere vaguely convenient, we can get you there. And if you live somewhere that is not vaguely convenient, we can still get you there. It just might be a little extra domestic flight. Um, that's really exciting because flying to get to some of these other expedition cruises is a pain. It is. It's usually at least one to two days on either end of your trip if we're talking specifically about Antarctica. Lift down to Ushuaia is not easy. As Stephanie mentioned, it usually uh, requires changing planes in Brazil. A lot of times you have to actually switch airports in the same city to actually get to a, a different plane that can take you down there. So again, it can be very complicated. Um, and not only does it add time and cost, but it's, you know, that momentum that builds up for your trip, it, it takes you two plus days to get there. We're actually, you know, uh, changing the game a bit in the expedition world, we thought, you know, instead of all of this cost that would, would be incurred to try and get people down there on commercial liners, let's just charter a plane, um, do an overnight flight, make it an Atlas experience from the moment our guests step on board. It will be themed Atlas. We'll have drinks flowing and food on the plane for you. We'll have pillow gifts for our guests as well. And it will, again, your adventure actually starts from the moment you step on board that plane. And the second we get you there, we whisk you away to the ship and your adventure begins. So it's really a great um, option, a, a great experience. And, um, you know, who, who can say that they've flown overnight uh, directly down to Ushuaia, Argentina? Very few people have been able to to do that. Um, Orlando then, to Ushuaia nonstop is really, really low on the most popular flight list. <laughs> really low. Like it's not even on the list. Uh, <laughs> um, but there are, there are so, so many things included in this, um, in these cruises that it really is um, quite impressive. Uh, we do have a question in the chat, which is the reusable bottles that are available on board. Are they good for for when you're on shore in Antarctica? Does the water freeze or is it just for on board? So 
and I will have to double check, but from what I understand, because I've had the same or a similar question to this, um, I don't believe you're allowed to take anything ashore with you in Antarctica. So um, there are lots of regulations when you're there. Uh, so you really can't take anything from the ship to the shore and you also can't take anything from the shore back to the ship. So there's and if a you lot do, it'll of, melt, I'm just saying. <laughs> But they're very protective. Um, there's a lot of regulations and our expedition team leaders will actually go through all of that with you. Um, all of the equipment that they have is approved um, that they can take uh, shoreside. So things like water um, and emergency supplies and any of those type of things will be kept on board the Zodiacs and with our, our team leaders. So they'll have all of that with you. Um, so again, uh, airfares included for Antarctica, it's the, the chartered air. If you happen to book a suite, we actually automatically upgrade you to business class on that chartered flight for Antarctica. Um, for all other itineraries there, you, you can upgrade. You just have to ask Stephanie um, and she'll be able to work that out for you um, if you would like business class air with any other itineraries. I think um, we have another question that is coming sure. via text message, which is, um, can you talk a little bit about the unlimited premium pours? What does that mean? What does that include? And is there champagne? There is champagne. I don't have the exact brand because I've been asked <laughs> okay. that before. We are still, I believe, finalizing a deal um, with a specific uh, for our premier champagne. But yes, it is included. So it's all your premium beer, wine and spirits are included. Obviously, all of your right. non-alcoholic beverages um, are included in that as well. So uh, basically everything you can think of is included. I do know that there are some very, very high, high end, super expensive liqueurs and, and um, different kinds of spirits that will be available for purchase as well. But all of your top shelf liquors that you would, would be pretty normal to see at, a, at any other upscale location will be available and will be included. Perfect. Um, there's also Wi-Fi service that's included, which is nice. So you could be literally at the end of the earth and um, have Wi-Fi service. Um, parkas and boots are included. The parkas are yours to keep and the boots are yours to wear while you're on board. Right. But I don't think anyone really wants to take them home. No. Um, we have another booze question because <laughs> these are my people on this call. Um <laughs> Bourbon will be part of this, I assume? As far as I know, yes, okay. bourbon will be included. Some good bourbon? Now I'm getting picky. Now we want to know. I would okay. assume it's good bourbon. It'll be premium. Um, but uh, I can see if Perfect. I can find out. I know that uh, we've, we've been asked for things like sample menus and lists mm -hmm. of, of liquors, and that's still being finalized now. I'm hoping that we'll have all of that available here in the very near future. Cool. So. Cool. But again, everything you see on that screen is included. The only thing I wanted to really kind of point out uh, was the last bullet there is the emergency evacuation return insurance. Um, the only reason I kind of wanted to speak to this because I don't want to read to you, I know everybody can read, um, is that this was a little bit unique. So it's not unusual for other expedition cruise lines to require you to purchase this type of insurance but we are the very first cruise line to include it in the fare for every single voyage, no matter the destination for every single guest on board. Now this does not, um, uh, this does not cover anything. Uh, it doesn't replace your trip insurance, your, your cancellation insurance, your medical insurance. This simply covers you because we go to remote destinations like Antarctica um, in the event that there is some sort of medical emergency on board that can't be handled by our doctors and nurses in our medical facility on board, um, it would cover the cost of the transportation to get you from the ship to the closest destination for medical treatment and from that location home. So that's the biggie in terms of cost in most cases is to actually medevac or get you from point A to point B in the middle of Antarctica. Um, so you are covered there and that's included in the, in the cost of the trip. So it's a great peace of mind element. We thought we might as well just incorporate that in there anyway, instead of saying, oh, you've got to tack this on and purchase it. Uh, but it is it is really important to know because your travel advisor will be relentless in telling you that you also need trip insurance. Um, you this does not include cancellation. This does not include medical emergency medical. So if you have to be medevaced off the ship and they will pay for it, you still need to pay for the cost of medical treatment, which is why you need additional right. travel insurance. So fortunately, we we can do all that. 
Um, there are 18 zodiacs, I believe, right? 18 zodiacs. There are. 18 zodiacs on board. So each zodiac can hold how many? 10 people? For 10 zodiac. people. Mm-hmm. And can everyone go ashore at once? We usually split it up into two. Um, so we'll do like a morning and an afternoon landing. Um, so essentially we can get everyone off our ship. Um, you can only technically in one landing, because again, all these rules and regulations in Antarctica, they allow you uh, to have a hundred people off the ship on shore for guided expeditions at a time. So we only have in Antarctica 186 guests max on our ship. So essentially we get all of our guests off every single day that we're in Antarctica doing those fully guided expeditions. Not all cruise lines can say this based on their size or the category of of ice class of their ship. Um, Again, some can only do one landing a day. And again, if they do that, it's only 100 people. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's a really great thing that we're able to do up to two landings per day. Um, So normally we do a landing in the morning. So we'll have, we'll divide it into two separate groups. We'll have um, about half the ships that will go and we'll do their guided expeditions um, on land uh, and walk around and see the the penguins and the seals and um, uh, the lay of the land and geology while we'll have the other half um, scheduled for ice cruises. And those also take place on our Zodiacs and they are fully guided as well. And they will go around and you can see the icebergs and and, uh, glaciers and see the calving up close and personal. It's great for whale watching. Again, you can also go and see the seals and penguins from the zodiacs, but you don't actually disembark those. And then what what we'll do is those groups for the afternoon, if you were shoreside in the morning and ice cruising in the afternoon, we'll flip flop those so that everyone gets a similar experience uh, throughout our day. Um, So... In the Zodiacs, how many, how many naturalists are there on board? We will have a team. And what, what type of naturalists and what are their area of, areas of expertise? So we will have a varied background. Um, our t- expedition team leaders are putting all of this together as we speak, but they will all be naturalists that will be made up in different walks of life and backgrounds. And um, uh, but it'll be made up and comprised of Um, ornithologists that study birds, glaciologists that study the ice, geologists that study the land, um, of course, marine biologists, um, and expert photographers as well. So they all kind of come together. They'll all be giving talks and briefings throughout the voyage as well. So you know what to expect. Um, They'll give you tips on what to look for. Um, They'll give you, again, photography tips so that you can make the most out of your trip. Um, There's a lot of with with the snow and the ice and white on white and that type of thing. So they'll tell you how to, to do that white balance with your camera so that you can have, again, a great experience. Um, they'll uh, give you all the rules and regulations, obviously the safety briefings that you need before you go ashore as well. Um, so it, it'll be a very well-rounded experience. So not only are you going to learn about what you're going to see, but you'll also get to go and put it into practice after you've um, been able to attend some of these sessions as well. I have um, a question so for you, to... actually. Sure? So let's say you're on a Zodiac and you're, you're doing the shoreside landing with one of the photography experts. And you're like me, who knows about as much photography as here's my camera, <laughs> I'm going to click and there's a picture. Um, and that's why I have a really, really good camera on my phone, because that's all I know. Will they mm-hmm. actually set it up for you and take your pictures? Yeah, I'm sure all you have to do is ask. <laughs> all you have to do is ask. Um, so I actually have later on in the presentation, I actually have some photos that I'm going to show you from a coworker of mine who was just in Antarctica in February of last year, funny enough, and he was on board a cruise there um, during this whole global pandemic situation and was actually stuck on board for 30 days. So he has lots of pictures, but he's not a photographer. He's like, this is, he's like, it's incredible. You've got to see it. It's amazing. So I thought instead of sharing a bunch of professional photos, why wouldn't I just show you exactly what you're going to see from like a, one of our perspectives and our point of view. So I'll share some of these photos with you here a little bit later in the presentation as well. So should we keep moving? Yep. Keep moving. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about World Navigator. So again, she is the first in a series of five. Um, All five sister ships will all be identical and just under 10,000 tons. And again, we only um, fill the ship to 186 guests in Antarctica. It's 196 guests, other itineraries. That's double occupancy or two two people per stateroom. 
Um, we're very proud of our ships and uh, what we are building because we are green and we consider all of our ships to be uh, environmentally friendly. We feature this new hybrid propulsion technology um, that is propellerless. That does not mean that we don't have propellers. Of course we do, but we are able to actually cruise up to five knots without using our propellers, which saves a ton when it comes to fuel consumption, again, making us very environmentally friendly. Um, and then we also have this anchorless positioning system because we go to places like Antarctica and we get, want to get up close and personal, it allows us to do so without disturbing any of the marine environment. We're very quiet when we're moving about as well um, uh, and we're quiet underwater so it's kind of a, a really nice thing um, of course we will have all the latest and greatest uh, technology and we will implement all the latest safety protocols at the time of the ship's launch those are all being finalized as we speak it seems like day by day by day things change um, in the current uh, environment so uh, we will be releasing exactly what that looks like um, here in the next few weeks um, so as soon as I get that, I'll share that with Stephanie and her team so that she can pass that along um, to you so that you have an idea of what that looks like. Um, again, our ship is small. We only have a total of 98 staterooms. Um, and we have, a, 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 of those, we have 10 suites. The majority of our um, staterooms have balconies or what we call French balconies. Um, and then we do have a handful, and when I say a handful, I mean 12 <laughs> um, outside staterooms as well. Um, and those are uh, a little bit smaller and we're actually going to convert those into solo suites in March of 2022. So for You heard it here first, people. <laughs> Not available reference. for the public to know yet. That's right. So, um, so that is coming. So we're very excited about that. Um, again, we've got an amazing crew on board that is international. We have a one to 1.4 crew to guest ratio. So again, that top notch service that you're accustomed to. We've got seven dining options that I'll show you a little bit later what those are all named and we'll go into detail a little bit about what that looks like. We've got two main lounges on board. One is called the Dome Observation Lounge. I have a rendering of that I'll show you. It's all the way forward on deck seven. Uh, just above the bridge. It's got floor to ceiling windows, 270 degree views, a great place to go. Um, and then we've got another main lounge on deck four. That's really where all the action happens. That's where our restaurants are. That's where um, our front desk, um, our fitness um, center is there as well as our, our sea spa is on that deck. But all the way forward, we have our auditorium. And that is where, again, those um, talks and briefings as well as nightly entertainment will take place there. So what kind really of entertainment have, is on board? Well, we'll have a variety. So <laughs> we're not going to have, I'll just tell you now, we were not going to have your Broadway style review shows. We're not large enough for that. Um, but we will have um, guest entertainers on board each and every cruise. Uh, we will have um, a small band on board. We will have a pianist on board. We actually um, we'll have somewhat of a piano bar type atmosphere in our dome lounge as well. We want it to be fun and interactive, um, not stuffy and boring because that's not who we are, um, but we really will make sure that you're entertained throughout your voyage. And we're even working on some pop-up venues and locations on board the ship to make each and every cruise a little bit different. Some will be culinary themed, others might be entertainment themed. Um, if any of you have ever been snow skiing, um, you might be familiar with the term opera ski. So when you get off the slopes, you come in and you um, have a drink and you talk about the slopes and, and what you did for the day and kind of brag about um, what you experienced. We have actually coined the, the phrase opera ski, <laughs> which will be a similar type experience. Once you come in from your expedition, we're actually going to provide you with hors d'oeuvres. Everyone will kind of gather around um, uh, one of our um, main lounges and we'll have big screen TVs. If you want to share your photos, you'll be able to do that and people can talk about what they experienced. We'll really kind of revel in the experience that, um, that you've had that day. The idea is that we want people to really take in what they've done, enjoy themselves and really have an amazing time. Um, I, we have another question that has come sure. in, um, which is, it's probably a little bit too soon to know if masks are going to be required or whatever, but have you announced any vaccination requirements? So they are, our executive team is working on it. I believe that I, what I can tell you is that we do want, uh, the goal is to have all of our crew vaccinated 
before sailing. Um, that is not an easy task for any cruise line. I don't care who announces it. And, and um, right now, the reason for that is you can't purchase the vaccine. Um, and you have to work with the countries of origin for the crew members. Mm -hmm. So every country is different. Their distribution is different. Um, but it is our goal. Uh, we are working very closely with different governments, with our crew agencies, um, uh, to make sure, as well as uh, in tandem with other, other cruise lines in the industry, to, to make sure that we are on top of that, um, to be able to facilitate that as best we can. So that is our goal, eventually, to, to have all of our crew vaccinated. Mm -hmm. They are considering um, mandating a vaccine for guests, but that has not been fully determined yet. Um, it is in consideration, but I, I don't know what the outcome will be on that. Um, I you. believe there will probably be some sort of requirements um, of some sort when it, when it comes to testing. As far as masks are concerned, it's just a little bit early for us to okay. say exactly what's gonna happen. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we have a heated pool and hot tubs up on deck seven. We'll have our well-being area, which encompasses our fitness studio. We will include, fully include any of our fitness and well-being classes. There's no additional charge for those. And then we do have a sea spa on board with two treatment rooms. And it is partner, we're partnering with L'Occitane. They're our, um, um, our primary um, provider there. And again, they have not just those amazing lotions and soaps and spa treatments and those types of things. They have very exclusive um, treatments, uh, facials and massages and things that are um, uh, exclusive to them that they will be providing on board. But then in your stateroom bathrooms, you'll have all these lovely amenities that Stephanie just showed you. So those are fully included in the price as well. And I think my favorite part of the ship is, and because I'm a ship nerd, I used to work on board ships, so I get very excited about it, but we'll be water's edge. So if you look at the picture on the screen all the way forward, which is a pointy end um, of the bow of the ship, you'll see that open deck space. That's called water's edge. It's only 30 feet above sea level. And it's a great place to go for scenic cruising. We actually have permanent heated benches placed out there that will switch on for you in Antarctica so you can stay warm while you're out there doing your whale watching or watching or looking at, at the glacier calving and the wildlife, but a really great place. And I think one thing that Atlas has done very well is to try and remind their guests that you're on board a ship, this is an expedition. You're gonna have a great time. I know a lot of other cruise lines build up and out and bells and whistles on board. Those are amazing things too, but we're a very different type of cruising experience. And the idea is to really immerse yourself in where you're going to be and what you're going to see. And I'm pretty certain that while you're sitting on that heated bench, watching the whales or whatever wildlife you are seeing, someone will also bring you hot chocolate or bourbon, of course. whatever you like, <laughs> of whatever <course. laughs> you like. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I thought I would show you a few renderings that we have so far um, okay. from Portugal. So here's a few um, that encompasses our accommodations here. So we do have, without going into too much detail, uh, of the 98 staterooms that we have, we do have three categories of one bedroom suites. Those all include a separate living room area and a bedroom area. Both have entrances out onto an extended 106 square foot balcony, and that's an outdoor balcony. Uh, with table and chairs, and you can actually sit out there and again, see the sites and do your wildlife watching from there. Um, we do have um, four different categories of veranda staterooms, but two different types. We've got the traditional uh, veranda that you're probably accustomed to if you've cruised before with a sliding glass door that takes you out onto a 52 square foot balcony. Again, you've got your own table and chairs out there, but you're actually sitting outside um, in the elements. Um, or we have what we call a Juliet style balcony. Some other people call it a French style balcony. Um, and that is one where we actually have taken the balcony square footage and incorporated that into the living space of the stateroom itself. And we've replaced the balcony with a floor to ceiling window. Um, part of that window will actually open up so you can take in the sights and smell the fresh air. And when you're done, you close the window and you've got all that extra living space. So we've got both types. Um, and again, we have a handful of those uh, ocean view staterooms that I mentioned as well um, that are a little bit smaller, but no balcony, but have a large picture window. 
So these are our designers. Onto, oh, I always say it wrong. Oitem Ponto, which is a Portuguese uh, designer. They've designed offices in Portugal, Paris, London, the Ritz Carlton. Um, really great fashion um, and interior designers there um, are working on all of our designs. So you can see a few of the renderings that we've got there. So that long image at the very bottom is of our front desk reception area. Of course, our dining room just above that. And then that's the dome observation lounge, which I'll skip to this slide to show you so that you see it up close and personal. So you can see at the very top, we've got our skylight there. So it brings in natural light. So if you don't wanna sit out on water's edge, um, and brave the elements, you can actually go up to deck seven all the way forward. This lounge sits right above the bridge. So it's an amazing place to go for scenic. So you cruising. have a better view than the captain. You do, you absolutely do. Well, it's about the same, but it's a little higher. <laughs> we wanna make sure he can see. Oh, we also, by the way, have an open bridge policy. So if you wanna go meet the captain, wanna see the bridge, you absolutely can. Um, we have in the dome lounge, floor to ceiling windows. Again, it's a 270 degree view there. Um, a great place to go and again, see the am amazing destinations that you'll be visiting. Um, and it's a nice quiet nook during the day, but in the evenings it will turn into a more lively, festive and fun place to be. Obviously we have our bar there. We will be serving some, um, some goodies there for you to munch on. And we will also have some entertainment. So the idea is we wanna turn this into a fun piano bar type atmosphere in the evenings. So then we also have, my slide is for catching up, um, our health and well-being area. So of course we've got our rendering of our uh, fitness studio there, we've got our pool and our hot tubs, and it is a heated pool up on deck seven. We do have a jogging track around that up on deck eight as well. And again, we'll have our fitness classes and our well-being classes that are fully included. And then we have our L'Occitane Sea Spa. Um, we'll have two treatment rooms there, of, car, of course, a, a sauna spa. Um, area. So again, if you want to pamper yourself, you absolutely can do that and smell great while you're there with those amazing products. And then again, our entertainment on board. Again, we'll uh, plan to have our uh, piano bar type atmosphere on up on uh, deck seven. We'll have other music and live entertainment. We'll have some guest entertainers um, that will come on board. And we will also have uh, very talented staff as well, including our cruise director, who will wear many hats, one of which will be partially in entertainment mode, which will be great. And I promised you more information on our dining. So this is brand new, never seen before, <laughs> which is great. Um, so we have seven different um, options for you to eat, one of those being 24-hour around-the-clock room service that is all included. Um, but we do have uh, six different venues um, for you to actually uh, visit and choose from. So Porto is our main dining room. It's our largest dining venue and the one where most meals will take place in. Um, and then we have Seven Aft, which is our uh, American style alternative restaurant and it is a charcoal grill and it's uh, appropriately named on deck seven all the way aft. Um, there will be limited capacity seating here because we're not a big, big ship. So for some of these different um, locations, uh, Seven Ash being one of those, we will, do, we will take reservations for that. Again, there's no additional charge for it, um, but you will need to sign up in advance and we will limit that. Um, we'll it have is a very impressive number of dining venues for such a small ship. For the uh, most ship, most other ships that are, are this size will have a main dining room and like a grab and go coffee bar and maybe one other venue. Um, certainly not three or four different restaurants, like actual sit down restaurants. So that exactly. is an impressive number. We'll have Alma, which is our Portuguese heritage type specialties. This will be um, uh, featured, um, I believe, nightly um, as well. We'll have different Portuguese type of menu items because that is where our parent company comes from. It's where our ship is flagged and where our ship is, is being built. Um, up in the dome uh, observation lounge, we'll have some, some goodies. We'll have a light lunch there. Um, we'll have hors d'oeuvres there in the evening as well. So you'll be able to grab something there. Paula's Pantry is actually a kind of a grab and go uh, casual cafe right in between um, our fitness studio and uh, our sea spa. And you can have uh, grab a smoothie. We'll have specialty coffees there and things throughout the day that you can, again, it'll be kind of a quick thing if you just wanna grab a quick little snack or a bite. 
And then, of course, we will have Journeys, which is our very first plant-based restaurant at sea. Um, it will be a designated section in our main dining room on certain evenings. Um, and again, it'll require you to sign up in advance, but we will have a full plant-based menu uh, for this experience um, on board the ship to give people who are very interested in that the option to, um, uh, to dine and to have these really amazing uh, culinary options there that uh, suits their lifestyle and their taste. So we're excited about all of these different venues and I think it's gonna be an amazing experience. So I told you I was a ship nerd earlier. So I always throw these types of things in. <laughs> um, so this was our ship world navigator. As you can see, she's being built in Portugal. She actually looks a lot different now because I've understood that she has just gotten her first beautiful coat of paint on, but I don't have any pictures of it yet. But um, these pictures were taken um, over the last few months. Uh, the one that you see, the large one uh, that's on the left-hand side there is actually the day that she floated out, which is huge uh, milestone in shipbuilding history, which is great. Um, uh, and she finished her outfitting on board um, or actually floating in the water. So it was a very exciting time for us. The day that she floated out as well was the day that we laid the keel for her sister ship, which actually um, is further along and looks almost like this now. Um, and we have laid since the keel for the third ship already. But um, we're very excited about it. Our first voyage does take place in July, um, on, um, on July 28th in the Black Sea. So I'm gonna just to jump you... in for one second. Oh. Uh, there are so, so many great itineraries that Atlas is coming out with, and I will be happy to discuss all of them in great detail with you. But I think that we're gonna move a little bit quickly through some of these slides, because I know that we, we've been giving you all sorts of information and we have some, we definitely wanna talk about some Antarctica itineraries. I wanna give you some fun facts. And of course we wanna give away some free stuff. So- um, Sure. Call me about the itineraries. I'll help you. No problem. <laughs> yep. And I even got a sneak peek at the 2022 itineraries that I can forward on to Stephanie. I just got that today. So I can share that. Um, and once we have more details on those, uh, she can talk to you about those. But again, our first cruise will take place in July. We'll sail through Europe. We'll do a transatlantic crossing over to Barbados. We'll do um, a Caribbean Amazon, come down the East Coast of South America, which puts us in position to... Um, end up in Ushuaia, Argentina for our, our to kick off our Antarctica season and that's where we begin. So we go Yay. on to our Antarctica expedition. Yay. So again, if you've been to if you're a port collector like a lot of people are, I'm one of them, um, and you've been to say six of the seven continents and one's left, you, you know where you've got to go. So Antarctica Also, is definitely if you right. haven't been to South America, your flight that gets you true. to Ushuaia, so this two continents one trip. Check, check right off the list. Yep. Of course. Yep, absolutely. So we actually have three different um, itineraries in Antarctica. We're going to talk tonight about the Antarctica Discovery Cruise, but I did want, and I will share all three itineraries with you just so that you can see them and take a quick glance. But the one we're going to talk about is the nine night, which is a round trip uh, Ushuaia. They're all round trip Ushuaia. Um, but we do have two one-time cruises. The Antarctic Solar Eclipse takes place November 28th of this year, and it, it gets you right into the perfect position to watch the full solar eclipse um, on December 4th. Uh, it happens once every 400 years, so if you miss it, you miss it. This it's is your chance. Popular, you, right? can't, you cannot sign up for the 24-21 itinerary yet. I'm just saying no. 400 years from now, you cannot do it. Yeah. So Can't if you want it. to do the solar eclipse, this is the time to do it. Um, you know, we, we can talk in detail about ports if it's something that you're interested in, but um, the solar eclipse cruise really is a once in a lifetime. And um, sure. And super popular as well. And on that four cruise, lifetimes. we'll also, in addition to our expedition team, we'll also have obviously astronomers on board as well to talk about exactly what, um, you're going to see and so that you can appreciate what that is all about. Um, and then we also have the Antarctic uh, Crossing the Circle Cruise, which takes place uh, in February of 2022. Again, another 12 night itinerary. It takes you a little bit in the opposite direction, but you do actually cross the Antarctic Circle. You get a certificate. So again, gives you more time for those expeditions. If you're interested in that itinerary, it happens one time. Um, definitely ask Stephanie about that. She can share more info with you. So let's get into some fun stuff. <laughs> I love this. I love, I love the fun facts, you know, because 
most of you know me and you know that I'm a big fat nerd and I love trivia. So, <laughs> I mean, we, you know, we can read all of these to you also, but we're not going to because we respect your ability to read. <laughs> um, Antarctica is one of the driest continents, which was such a huge surprise to me. Also, the ice can be up to two miles thick. That's mm -hmm. crazy town. Two miles. Yep. That is the length yep. of Key West. It's actually um, divided up into old ice and new ice. So our captains and all of our navigators obviously are very well versed and trained in sailing in Arctic conditions. Um, and they know the difference between, again, that two mile thick old ice versus newer ice that they can actually break through. I think my favorite fun fact is the first one because there's so many people who have never been to Antarctica or mm -hmm. even um, uh, the Arctic and they feel that they could go to Antarctica and they can see polar bears. No, nope. uh, that's the other pole. Right, exactly. Which, by so, the way, um, a little birdie might have told me that there might be Arctic cruises coming in 2023. So you can see polar bears, maybe. Stay tuned. <laughs> I don't know okay. what you're talking about. <laughs> Just saying. And again, it's it's pretty much. Oh, look, we, <gasps> we have a trivia it. question. Put your answer in the chat box. Oh, David Cherney, you are a very fast typer. I knew it. That's all the, I'm going to say. I knew it. I knew the, he would answer first. The answer is two miles. Ice <laughs> can be two miles thick in Antarctica, which, like I said, it's the length of Key West, which is kind of crazy. So a gift is coming your way. Yay. So some people are a little surprised, but the weather in Antarctica might not be quite as cold as you think it is. Now, if you're like us and you're in Florida, 70 degrees is cold, and that's when I break out my boots. But um, for people in other areas of the world and other parts of our country, um, you know, the temperatures uh, between 27 and 33 degrees is not that bad. But again, because it is, a, it totally is. And because it is dry and it is a desert, um, it is not always quite as cold as you think it as it will be. Um, but the one thing about Antarctica is that the weather is a little unpredictable and it does mm -hmm. change very quickly and it can change in a matter of minutes. And that is very typical. It's, it's something that happens all the time. So we will actually give um, Stephanie and her team a packing list, a suggested packing list that she will pass along to you so that you kind of know for an expedition trip how to pack. Um, and again, we will include certain things um, for, for you as well. So you don't have to pack your big heavy coat. We'll give you your big parka when you get there. And again, it's yours to keep. It's your souvenir. Um, but it's always great to pack in layers just because of the weather and because it is volatile. So again, you're going to you're gonna have wind. You're going to have rain, probably some snow, depending on the time of year that you go. And you'll also have sun. So <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. And again, it does change very, very quickly when you're there. So there's really three, there's one season, it, there's two seasons in Antarctica. There's it's the always six, cold. <laughs> it's cold it's season. Colder in certain parts of the, the year, yes. Um, there's about six months of darkness. That is not when we cruise there, don't worry. That's their winter season. Um, the the uh, summer season is November to March, which coincidentally is when we will be traveling there. And that is when you have almost 24 hours of daylight. Um, so we, yes, before we get the question, we do have blackout curtains <laughs> in our state rooms as well. So you can sleep, um, but we kind of loosely designate, uh, different sections of that summer season. So early season is considered about November to mid December, give or take. That is the time for the best photography because you've got that pristine white snow, that's untouched snowfall, great time for photography. And that's also when the snowshoeing is the best. Um, because again, that, that white snow, we will have snowshoeing as an optional excursion that you can take. Which is included, um, and but it's it optional. is, it is, it is complimentary, but it is limited. And all of our excursions, all of our um, optional excursions in Antarctica are all weather permitting as well. And they are all limited in capacity. Then our mid season is about mid December through the end of January. That's when t temperatures start to warm up just a little bit. Usually toward the end of the early season also, you'll see the male penguins, they'll go over and they'll sit on their eggs because males actually hatch the eggs as they should. And um, <laughs> then when you're, when you're sailing into the mid season, you'll be able to see some of 
um, again, sometimes the new hatchlings are toward the end of that season, they call it the birthing season. You'll see some of the baby seals, a good mix of wildlife there. And then in the late season, which is usually the end of January to the end of March, again, better accessibility because the temperatures have warmed up. Uh, some of that new ice has actually melted a bit. So it's a little more navigable for the ship. Um, and you'll have more mammal viewing there. So it's a really great opportunity to see those little baby penguins and little baby seals. And it's great also uh, time for whale watching as well. So Kathy, um, someone had just texted me to ask about some different itineraries. So I know we have some very, very pretty pictures in the next few slides. So we're just going to cruise through them very, very quickly. You can, you can spend much longer in real life when you're in, in Antarctica <laughs> looking at them. We're going to cruise right through. You're going to see penguins. You're going to see <laughs> seals. You're going to see some other birds and whales and all, all right. sorts of beautiful pictures um and you can have pictures and, that look like that and then Ooh, you'll get a trivia another question. trivia question <laughs> how many active volcanoes are on antarctica it was not in a slide i might have mentioned it at the beginning of the pre oh, Alyssa! Alyssa was actually first she just had me on direct message sorry Yay. there is another chance for a third prize coming up very very soon <laughs> So anyway, so as right a along. recap, yep, as a recap, our ships are all certified for ice exploration. For those technical people, we're polar category C, our ice class is 1B, which means we've got the reinforced hulls that we can navigate through that ice. Again, we've got those 18 zodiacs, um, and all of our landings are fully included, our ice um, uh, cruises are fully included, and we do have optional shore excursions, um, some of which are paddle boarding and kayaking. Uh, because of the safety equipment, because you um, have to have prior experience on those, they are limited capacity and there is a charge for those, but you can pre-book those in advance of your trip. Um, we also have camping overnight on the ice. We've got snowshoeing, which is complimentary. I was just told that we're working on a snorkeling option. If you're really brave, you want to brave the cold. Of course, there is always the Antarctic plunge, which means you actually dive into the water. There's no charge for that, but you do get a certificate. So That sounds like um, <laughs> the most horrifyingly cold people thing love it. ever. Yep, people love I it. I will be happy to cheer on other people doing it. <laughs> Um, and again, I told you already about our natural center experts on board yep. the ship. Um, and in terms of what we include, again, the parka, the knee boots that um, are these big rubber, uh, what we call muck boots, so rubber boots that come up over your knees to protect you from the cold, as, as well as protecting um, the wildlife from you and, and things that you, you bring ashore with you as well. Everyone gets a pair of binoculars, all your safety equipment, that's all included. So I'm going to just breeze through some of these More pretty pictures. pretty pictures. These More are actual pictures photos from a non-photographer um, of what he saw and experienced while he was there uh, just a little more than a year ago. Those are chin strap penguins, by the way, and Gen 2 penguins and little baby fuzzy Aww, seals. Cute. So cute. cute, of course. Lovely wildlife. <gasps> we have another opportunity for a beautiful prize. <gasps> Lori. <laughs> Lori with your good spelling. Lori Colin wins the beautiful last locks 10 prize whoop, whoop. coming your way. Thank you all for paying attention. <laughs> it, it makes me feel better because it makes me feel like I haven't just been putting these trivia questions together for me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And these are the three itineraries I told you about. Um, none of our itineraries are super, super specific. And there's a reason for that because I mentioned before that the, the uh, weather changes very frequently. So all of them have what we call captain's choice. Captain's choice is exactly what it sounds like. Our ship captain is in contact with all other boat and ship captains in the area. They share information on not just the weather and the ice, but also the wildlife that they see. And they make the determination at that moment on the spot where they're, where they're gonna land for the day. So the idea is that we're going to get you to the South Shetland Islands. We're going to, on a different itinerary, try and get you um, out to South Georgia and the Sandwich Islands if we can for that solar eclipse cruise. But it might not actually be on the specific day that we outline in the itinerary. So don't get married to day one, day two, day three. And just know that in order to get to Antarctica, you actually have to cross the Drake Passage. And it can be either called the Drake Lake, which means it's nice and smooth. And again, the Drake Passage is where the Atlantic meets the Pacific. So it's a very interesting area where those two large bodies of water con uh, converge. 
Um, or it can be called the Drake Shake, which I say chalks it up to that expedition experience. But once you get into the actual Antarctic pen Peninsula there, it is smooth sailing from there. But the one specific itinerary we wanted to feature is the one that Stephanie has chosen for you. And that is the December 10th, um, actually 2021. It says 2022 on the screen, but it is this year, 2021. Um, which is um, an, a Kathy, nine night. I'm sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you really, really quickly because we are <laughs> about at the top of the hour and I know that everybody, you know, I did promise an hour max. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you if you could just scooch along to the slide that you have with the change policy and the confidence and peace of For mind. Sure. And then we're going to tell them about our special savings and then we will thank you all. Onboard enrichment, we already covered. We covered yep. our flight. Yep. So we do have this a current voyage important. change policy right now. Um, you have the ability to change your voyage up to 15 days prior to the cruise to any other published sailing. If for some reason you, and this is without penalty, without any sort of fee. Um, if for some reason you're not sure what you wanna change it to, we will issue a future cruise credit to you and that future cruise credit is fully transferable to a friend or family member. Um, you can give that away. Again, we're trying to be as flexible as we absolutely possibly can. Um, and if you have any questions on that, again, you please ask Stephanie or her team. Um, and then we, as I mentioned before, we include that uh, emergency evacuation and return insurance. It's always great to have travel insurance on top of that that uh, Stephanie can help you with as well. And then we do have a special offer that is just for Stephanie and for Live Well Travel Often, which is amazing. Um, and it is for the December 10th, 2021 Antarctica Discovery Cruise. Again, that's that nine night round trip Ushuaia. Right now until, and it's valid through um, April 30th, um, you can pay for one stateroom category and get an upgrade to another. So you can pay for a C1, which is our lead-in price point. That's that uh, ocean view and actually get a balcony, which is a B2. You can pay for a B2, get an A2, pay for a B1, get an A1. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for you to, um, to, to have a really nice stateroom at a little, a little bit lower price. We are also providing a $300 per person pre-cruise credit um, regardless of the stateroom category that you choose. And that can be applied toward those optional shore excursions that we're talking about. So snowshoeing, any of the kayaking, paddle boarding, um, the um, snorkeling that we're putting together, the camping overnight on the ice. And again, you can pre-book all of that in advance. Um, we're also only collecting a 50% reduced deposit, which is 500 per person or 750 per person if you book a suite. But I think the big thing that really makes this amazing is that it's a complete risk-free deposit. So you saw on the previous slide that you can change your cruise up to 15 days prior without penalty. We're actually going to give you a full refund of your money up to 90 days prior to sailing. So you've got up until 90 days to get whatever you've put down toward the cruise back completely in cash. So again, we're trying to be as completely flexible given the current global situation. We understand people's um, hesitancy, but we really know people want to go places and they really want to travel. Um, so we were trying to, to make that as easy a decision for you as possible. But keep in mind, we only have 98 staterooms and, um, and this is definitely a bucket list trip that people have really been asking a lot about and mm -hmm. including, including Stephanie. And um, we've been talking all about it and getting all excited about it. And I really appreciate you being uh, able to, to share this with all your friends and family. So I think that's awesome. Perfect. Okay. I think that that's about what we have, right? Thank you guys so <laughs> much for coming. Um, if there are any other questions that you have, uh, you can let me know now. You can unmute yourself. You can ask them now. You can call me. You all know where to find me. Um, whatever works for you, just let us know. And we will be happy to answer any of your questions. Oh, and I think we wanted to add too, that if for some reason, if the December 10th cruise isn't does it work with your schedule just ask stephanie about other dates because we will be able to to give you some special pricing we do have special um, pricing. yeah between now and the end of april we're, we're able to kind of um uh, give a special offer just for those who have attended this event so i've been able to kind of put in a code for that <laughs> perfect so does anyone have any questions for me anything i can answer about atlas or antarctica 
I think we have, we have gotten quite a few questions coming in. So I think we've covered all the questions from the chat as we've gone along. So I think we are good. Um, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm so glad that you guys all were able to join us. And any questions you have, just let me know sometime in the next few days or whenever. Thank Thanks you. so much, Stephanie. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thanks, Steph. Thank you. Bye. Bye.